The first time I flew a kite, I was about the age of five, and I was standing atop the hill in Gasworks Park in downtown Seattle. My mom's boyfriend was flying this two-line kite, and it was zipping and diving across the sky, and it looked like so much fun, I had to try. These kites are a bit of a workout for a fully grown adult, and here he is handing it off to a 40-pound uncoordinated child. And let me just say, this was a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Within a second, I am launched airborne. <laughs> <laughs> and much to my surprise, a mere second or two after being handed the kite, I am one big mess of kites, strings, and skinned up knees at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> but for me, it felt like I had been soaring for hours and that I had flown over the city for miles. My mom came rushing over to me, expecting to find a child battered and crying, and, and there I am, and I'm laughing. I can't stop grinning. And I ask, can I do it again? <laughs> because for me, in that briefest of moments, I was completely free. That was the closest to flying I have ever been. As the years would go on, I have fallen more and more in love with kites. And I still get that same sense of freedom and flying, whether I'm standing on the beach and I'm making my kite do loops or other acrobatics, or if I'm being pulled up a snow-covered mountain on my skis, or across a beach at incredible speeds. I still get that same sense of enjoyment and flying if I'm standing with my friends and we're flying like a flock of birds. Over the past decade, I've come to discover that there is this whole other world of kites, a world that is filled with stunning artwork and fantastical shapes that I never could have imagined would fly. And my memories are filled with thousands of people that have been smiling when they first flown a kite. You take someone who is naturally shy, afraid, and introverted, and you hand them a kite, and within five seconds, you see a change. You see them start to smile, and chances are they're talking nonstop, and you can't get the kite away from them. And that happiness is so pure and so free that it spreads. It is said that our most heartfelt communication happens with our body language. And if I can trust what I see in those first five seconds, well, I see someone allowing themselves to be free. They are releasing all the frustration and tension they might have, and they're letting go of those things that might be holding them down. Their shoulders relax and their head tips upward, and this genuine smile spreads across their face. What is truly exceptional is that allowing ourselves to experience that freedom through kite flying radically changes our lives. It not only changes how we see ourselves, but it changes how we see the world. It changes how we see various things around us, and it even changes the way we innovate. Not many would be surprised to discover that it was playing around with kites that led Hargraves, Alexander Graham Bell, and the Wright brothers into aviation. Our basic understanding of how planes could fly, what shapes would work best, and simple aerodynamics comes from kites. We've supposedly learned about electricity and radio wave propagation, and kites have even helped build the bridge at Niagara Falls. Several militaries for several hundreds of years have been using kites for enemy observation and signaling, and they have served as the first platforms for large aerial photographs. And surprisingly, kites have even saved the lives of pilots lost at sea. For more than a thousand years, 
Various cultures across this world have used kites for religious and daily rituals, whether it's the Micronesians using kites to fish or the large memorial kites in Guatemala honoring the dead. And we may continue to think of kites as a children's toy or a relic of a less technologically advanced past, but kites are helping us to discover new frontiers here on Earth and beyond. Kite power is seriously being looked at for renewable energy, and the same principles of flying that kite here on the surface of the Earth are the same principles of fluid dynamics that will allow us to harness power by flying kites underwater. As we branch out across the solar system, we will be using large kites to harness the winds of solar radiation, providing an infinite resource for propulsion. But kites are not just about technological advances. They are also about helping us discover new things within ourselves. And they're helping us to unlock new potential and to reconnect pathways we thought were previously broken. A few years ago, I was at a kite festival with my partner, a fellow avid kite flyer. And this, this kite festival is kind of special. It's an indoor kite festival. And indoor kite flying is this fun, special niche in the kite community that is oddly enough the most accessible way for people to get into kite flying. We don't need fans or wind generators. We just use super lightweight material and through the movements of our body, we can get a kite to fly, glide, and dance. It was a few years before this that my partner had introduced me to the power and expression that comes from indoor kite flying. And ever since then, I was hooked. <laughs> so there we are at this festival. And just like in years past, this festival would bring in a group of uh, local folks for us to teach how to fly. This year, it was a group of folks that had been affected by traumatic brain injury. Now, some, of the, some in the group were just beginning their path to recovery, and there's varying abilities and varying impairments in this group. But there's this one gentleman, a firefighter, a few years prior, he had been hurt on the job, and he had been unable to walk unassisted since his accident. One of the flyers brought him out onto the floor and handed him a glider kite. Now, glider kites require minimal input, and they don't require a lot of movement across the floor. And in a way, they force the flyer to be completely focused on that moment in time. So after a few minutes, the firefighter's flying, and his friend notices he's not holding on to his walker. And he pulls the walker away. The firefighter takes a step, and another step, and another. It took a minute for all of us there to recognize what was happening, what we were witnessing. For the first time in five years, this firefighter walked unassisted. Kite flying transcends all of the boundaries that we may willingly or unwillingly place upon ourselves. It transcends cultural differences, religion, language, physical ability, and age. There is literally a kite out there for everybody. Whether you want the athleticism of power kites and kiteboarding, or the fast-paced action of a sport kite, or maybe you want to be artistic and design something new and creative. Kites allow us to express ourselves on both our physical and our creative side simultaneously. And kite flying in its very nature encourages us not to see 
one failed launch, one crashed landing, or one tangled set of lines as a reason to not fly again. So, I invite you to go find a kite and let it fly. Watch as you change. Watch as the world around you begins to look different. Take note of that feeling you have in that very moment and know that there are billions of people around the world and throughout time that have experienced that same exact emotion. And then take that kite and hand it off to someone else and witness the transformation in them. Thank you. <laughs>